Yes, welcome to yet another edition of PCS Impact Q&A. I'm your host, MJ Boyce. I'm the Director of Community Outreach at PCS Grades. Boom! With me, as always, is the lovely Megan Harless, our resident PCS reform advocate and, oh, by the way, resident BA censored for little ears in your room because we love you. We got a great show today because we're going to talk all about how we need to organize for PCSs, and we're going to show you kind of how to do that, especially with all these orders coming down the pipeline. You know it's the season. Tis the season. Uh, but before we get to Megan with some of those DOD updates and dive right into those questions, we're going to go ahead and do those housekeeping items as we do every single week. Here we go. Okay. First and foremost, we have the answers. If we don't know the answers, guess what? We know who does. And if we don't know either of those things, we can take your questions for action and get back to you with an answer. Speaking of questions, questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comment box below. Uh, the more questions, comments, concerns you engage with us, the more entries you have to win a PCS binder, courtesy of Megan Harless and her, well, I'll let her go into that rabbit hole. We'll probably pull up a few pictures for you, but this is the thing that covers A to Z, everything that we're actually going to be going over today. How about that? Um, next up, okay, so we bring these experts to you. Today, Megan's our expert, per always, and uh, we have experts from Transcom to military movers to other industry professionals, realtors, education experts, and even military spouse employment advocates. You name it, anything that has to do with PCSing, we bring them to you to you because you got the questions. Now, sometimes your military family is going to have a situation that is specific to your area. And you're going to have specific issues just, just for you. And in those cases, there will be two forever and always resources. Number one, your local chain of command. Number two, your local transportation office. Those are the people who know you. Those are the people who are dealing with your stuff. Those are the people who can take your issues and further them for action. Last, but certainly not least, we've got to do our part, people. We have to keep doing our part. We've got to flatten the curve. We have got to flatten that curve. Wear your mask, social distance, whatever it takes, because when we flatten that curve, we're going to flatten Murphy with it. You hear us, Murphy? We are coming for you. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Megan for those DOD updates. Megan? And you're on mute. <laughs> it got me this time instead of MJ. Okay, so starting over. So just a couple of things for y'all um, this week. So again, as I'm going to reiterate every week that, you know, we have a lot of folks coming down on their orders right now for the summer cycle. As soon as you get your hard official orders, you can get on DPS and set up your move. Now you get to the part of DPS where it says, hey, where is your uh, next location at? Give us an address. You don't have to have an address to go through that piece. You just need to put in what your gaining location is so that way they know where to send your stuff to. Um, you can always go back in and update with an address at a later time, but don't let that piece throw you off. Set up your move as soon as you can. That's going to help the um, the DOD be able to have time to uh, assign your move to a company and whoever that company is, it's going to give them time to properly plan your move and not have to like squeeze you in between other things. So set up your move as soon as you get your orders. The second thing is that we've seen a lot of questions regarding reways and being overweight. Now, remember that when you get that email from DPS with your weight in it, there is a note at the bottom saying that that weight does not include your pro gear or packing material deduction. So packing material, it's 10% of your weight and your pro gear um, for uh, service member pro gear, it's up to 2,000 pounds. And if you had um, spouse pro gear that was claimed, it's up to 500 pounds. The TSP, your company cannot take those deductions off. Only your local transportation office can. So when you get that email and it says you may be overweight because it has you at 15,000 and you're only allowed 14,000, don't freak out yet. Just remember that um, it doesn't have those deductions on it. If you are concerned about it, you can request a reway. You need to request it as soon as possible. Once your stuff is delivered, a reway cannot be done. So make sure it gets done before they attempt to uh, deliver. Now, if they do a reway and it happens to be more than what the original amount is, again, do not freak out. 
they will take the lower of the two amounts um, to use as your weight. And then again, your packing material and uh, pro gear deductions come off of that weight on the back end. So just a little uh, clarification on how that works. So that's all I've got for now. So back to you, MJ. Word. Thank you for those updates. Again, peeps, Megan goes down that policy rabbit hole so we don't have to. She's able to break that down in digestible pieces for the peeps like me. Yes. All right. Well, I'm super excited about this whole thing because I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm not exactly what you would consider the organized I, there's a method to my madness, but I'm not organized like you absolutely need to be. Like, this is a formula that absolutely should be adhered to regardless if if you're, if you're like the hyper aware and, and labels on label makers type thing. Or even if you're kind of like me, fly by the seat of your pants, you can get away with that sometimes, but not when it comes to PCSing. At least you don't want to go that route. So we're going to dive right into some of those questions. I already know kind of the answer to this question, Megan based on touching the stove when it was hot. Um, but why, tell our audience why it's so important, why it's so important to stay organized during a PCS. So the first thing is, I mean, when we PCS as a military spouse, it is a habit of ours to want to be in control of everything. Um, as we know, going through the PCS process, it's not always possible for us to be in control of everything. So being organized, as organized as you can, kind of gives us that um, feeling, that confidence that, you know, we have control over things. Um, it helps keep things together, keep things uh, al aligned properly. So, you know, being organized with whatever it is, the paperwork that you need to get from point A to point B, having a system for that. Mine is the PCS binder that we're going to go into more detail about here, but, you know, having a place for all of that. So when you need something, you can find it, um, you know, for prepping our home, it's, you know, organizing different things together. So that way it makes the packing process a little smoother and the unpacking process smoother. So I think, you know, being able to have um, stuff organized, you know, kind of also helps us make feel more confident in our move and, and that it's going to go smoother. Got you. And, you know, I just I kind of have to throw this up here. Uh, Krista, Krista Curtis, shout out. Um, you just made the Internet for me today because I feel so much better about myself. The fact that you are a professional organizer that specializes in exactly what we're talking about. And it's still a challenge for you. Okay, I don't feel so bad, um, but I just want to give you a shout out and say thank you for winning the internet for me today. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about this PCS binder because, you know, I mean, like I've seen different people kind of come up with different things and, and you kind of took all of the things that I've learned about and heard about in terms of staying organized with this binder and you kind of, you put it all together in one thing. But So, so just kind of tell me what exactly is a PCS binder? So a PCS binder is basically a place and um, the binder. Uh, it's, it's a place where you kind of organize everything that you need to get from point A to point B. Uh, you know, it's making sure you've got like your husband's orders, your spouse's orders, because um, they're going to need a million copies of them. Um, sometimes they get lost. You've got a copy to easily, you know, replace all the duplicates that need to be used. Um, it's a place to put like any travel reservations, put any of those life documents, so, like your marriage certificate, birth certificates, um, shot records that you may need, school records, vet records um, for your animals. Uh, you know, all of that stuff together to keep it organized. Now, I will tell you, back looking back when we had our first couple of PCSs, I did not have a binder. I had um, at one point a manila folder that had some things paper clipped together, and then it uh, transpired into like a two pocket folder that had a bunch of stuff paper clipped together. Um, and eventually, I got to the binder system and then realizing, you know, just how much easier that made it to flip tabs to find what I needed. And I wasn't shuffling through paper clipped bunches of paper together to find what we needed. Uh, you know, so the binder system really goes a long way to kind of keep you organized, keep your papers together and help you find what you need, especially when you get to your getting location and you have to set everything all up again. You've got everything you need right there to get set back up. And, you know, that makes sense. Um, you know, I, I love the three ring binder and you're kind of going to show us in a second what kind of goes into that. And you're going to like physically show all of the stuff, which I think is awesome. By the way, again, we're giving one of these away today. 
and 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 it's gonna help your next PCS. Um, I personally would probably transfer all of the stuff that's in there right now into a trapper keeper. Mm-hmm. I was that kid in school who lost all of the things, not just her homework. I've lost my good grades too to show my parents. So it was because it would just fly out and I was just like shoving it in at the end of the day being like deuces, I'm out. I I can put it in there and then I can zip it up. And even if it's not organized, I can reorganize it later and nothing will have fallen out. You don't even want to see the inside of my purse. Um, So (laughs) why don't you go ahead and tell our audience um, and and kind of show them, walk them through what goes into this PCS binder and and, um, what's included there and why. And why? Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the one we're actually giving away today so that way you can see exactly what it is you're getting. Um, So it's a three ring binder. Uh, When you open it up, there's several different things here. So I'm going to turn it around um, to start with the first thing that comes in it is always a little notebook of some sort. Uh, We get to that point in our process where we just, you know, everything is packed up. We've got nothing left. We realize we need to take some notes for things. We're trying to find a scrap piece of paper somewhere. Um, You know, we're trying to find an old receipt that we can scribble something on the back of. So just having a little notebook of some sort in your binder where you can keep those little last minute notes or lists or whatever it may be, uh, you know, I have found is really, really needed. Um, Also in the binder that you are getting. So I have what is called a quick reference, um, quick contact reference card. So basically I'm putting the information for my TSP, for my move coordinator. I'm putting the contact information for our local agent, um, for our transportation office, for our destination agent. Um, Just, you know, those times when you need to get a hold of somebody and you can't go back through your emails quick enough to find out what their name was, what their phone number is, trying to find whose email you need to call, you know, having all of that kind of listed in one spot, you've got it, you can easily pull it out, reference it. You've also got the information for like the uh, transcom hotline down there. Um, and so, and also the DPS help desk as well. So you can easily, you know, have those numbers right there. You're not digging through the internet trying to find them. Can I just pause for a second and just say that sheet alone would probably be my BFF. Like you would literally see tears on it because I would probably be using that particular one so much. Mm -hmm. Um, The next thing that you get is the inventory assessment code. So um, again, on bright colored paper that you get because when you go through and you double check your inventory, you're gonna see on your furniture, all of these little numbers, letters, abbreviations, for how they mark your furniture for the current condition. Um, You know, and so this kind of helps you, you know, being able to double check it easily rather than trying to use their tiny little key on their inventory sheet. So this is where you can pull it out and you can put it right next to your inventory and go line by line to see exactly what they are marking your furniture as. Can we pause for just a brief second? Hold that up. I just want you to hold it up a little bit to the camera. Um, And, 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 uh, you know how it's got all the codes and everything okay and a uh, quick question from Andrea D- does it have does it include furniture codes on there as well these are the fr- the, the furniture codes yep. tracking tracking yep. okay and we've gotten a couple of questions and and, and I just I, I want to throw this out there because um, we're going to be dropping the link here shortly mm-hmm. um, but for those of you who are looking for that PDF of that quick quick reference sheet if I'm not mistaken Megan don't you have something so so Megan actually creates these for you and she can she can send them to you like in, in different formats um, and we're going to drop the link to where you can find that um, towards the end promise hand to goodness um, so, Megan, if you could just throw that in the private chat, and Stacey will throw it in there um, so that after this webinar, you guys can check it out and see, you know, what you're working with, with what you have. But remember, the more you engage with us, you could win this. Like, this could be in your hands and, like, seriously, like, by the end of this webinar. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, anyways, please continue. What else do we have in this rep- in this uh, binder? Uh, you get a list of all the normal um, acronyms that are used when PCSing. So, you know, the GTC, the government travel card, the SIT that you might hear sometimes, remove coordinator might use it, which is storage and transit, Um, you know, DPS, the defense personal property system. A lot of times in groups, you'll see things listed as HV, which is like the high value inventory, high value forms, um, the JTR, joint travel regulation. And so if you're not, I mean, it is speaking a second language. So if it's not 
things that you're used to, to saying, used to knowing your first or second time PCS and you don't understand it, this kind of helps break it down so you understand what those acronyms are and you're not you know, just trying to figure out and Google what it is. Um, another thing you get in here is the, uh, you get two of these, the do not pack um, signs that you can put on the door. Um, so that way, you know, you can tell your movers don't go in there. I also like to put duct tape on the door um, just a little bit. So that way I know like over the little door frame piece that way I know if it's been messed with or not. Um, also because we have, we have pets. And so for us, I, my cats in the do not pack room, um, one of them has anxiety and so will attack people they don't know. And so just them even knowing don't go into this room because it's for your safety, I think goes um, you know, it's funny that you say that because I, I, you say, you know, you have cats that when, you know, when they're nervous, they'll attack somebody. I have kids like that. So I'm just saying <laughs> we can lock them in a room. Just FYI, there's your sign. No, I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. I love you kids. If you're watching, I know you're not, but just in case. Yes. Um, you also get the PCS guide. So this is something I created a year or so ago maybe two years, a year and a half ago. Um, basically, it's breaking down the regulations that you need to know. Um, you know, the things that apply to you, the changes in the program, some of it, um, it has in here like your weight allowance stuff, um, you know, some checklists, some additional checklists and information that isn't in the binder piece. So you also get a copy of that um, in the binder kit. Now to turn this around. Um, three ring little zip pencil pouch kind of deal. So when we move, um, we have a habit, um, at least my family did, of all of our receipts at one point, they just got shoved into the glove box until we arrived at our location. Um, we've also had receipts that have just been shoved into my purse, um, you know, and then we try to sort them out later. Um, you know, some things you don't need to keep your receipts for, some things you do. Some people like to keep receipts for everything because if you've spent more than what you're getting reimbursed, you can use it on your taxes. Um, and so keeping your receipts is a great way to kind of, um, you know, make sure you're being reimbursed what you should be or to let you know if you have additional expenses that aren't being reimbursed. So the little zip pocket where you can easily put in all of your receipts is a great thing to have there. Um, let me see. I'm actually going to take that out real quick so I can go through the rest of it easily. Um, so then you get to uh, kind of like you're welcome to your PCS binder. It explains everything that's in here, how it should be used, um, how it can be helpful to you kind of deal. Um, the next thing that you come to is your table of contents. Um, so you're going to see in here in the back and you get your tabs as well. They're all labeled, but that way you have an easy reference guide as to what your tabs kind of correlate to. So give me an example. What's what's tab number two say? What's in the table so of contents? Tab number two is your current location, hotel reservation, your driving directions, hotel reservations in route, and hotel reservations at your destination. So again, I know we like to do things a lot digitally. We can keep our emails of stuff. We have our apps for everything. But sometimes technology fails us. Sometimes we end up in a dead zone. Um, you know, there might be a computer issue. And they can't pull up your reservation. So you make your reservation, you print it up, stick it in that tab. So that way, then you arrive there, something happens, you can pull it out and be like, well, no, I did make that reservation. Here it is. Um, you know, so and you know, I just think that's a really good idea because when you said technology fails, right? So yeah. how about let's just go ahead and insert Murphy because Murphy is fail. Okay. <laughs> and Murphy tends to come at our most inconvenient times, which include a PCS. Mm -hmm. So this is like the anti Murphy. This is like the antidote. This is like the bug spray. I'm serious because you're right. Technology fails. I'm telling you, my phone would probably have fallen off the car because I would have left it there in another state before I realized that it was gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's kind of, I mean, everything that you kind of need, um, you get your table of contents that correlate to what your binder tabs are. The next thing is the recent changes to the program. And I go back to 2019 you get 2019, 2020, and 2021 will be listed in here. So all of those new business business rules that take effect May 15th of every year, you're going to have them so you can easily reference them to know what's been changed since your last PCS, what is new. Um, you know, so that way nothing should be um, a shock to you for that. Uh, let's see here. The next thing, um, 
a quick reference checklist. Um, this is just a general short little mini checklist that if you need to you figure out like there's something I feel like I'm forgetting, you can go through here and be like, yep, I set up my move. We've already got our new home figured out. Uh, already got my mover scheduled if you're doing a PPM. Um, already prepared our moving budget. So you can kind of go through and just kind of have that general checklist of what uh, you may need to do. Uh, the next one is a partial PPM packing list. So if you are, um, you know, either moving yourselves and you need to have stuff in your car or like, you know, just when you move in general and you've got stuff in your car, you're trying to figure out what all do we need to take with us? Um, what do we need to have in our car versus what can we send on the moving truck? So this just kind of breaks it down to you. It's some general things that you should have, you know, like if you have pets, you know, you need to have their vaccination records with you. There's a tab for that in the binder. Um, you know, if they have medicine, make sure that gets packed into your car. Um, don't forget their treats. If you're going to be house camping, uh, maybe take your instant pot or crock pot or a baking sheet so you can easily make a few little meals. Um, so just a little kind of a packing list for that. Um, so if you know me, you know I enjoy the PCS purge, the clean out. We do it every year even when we're not moving, but sometimes you feel like you're forgetting things to clean out or you, you feel like you're not done with it all. So you get a PCS purge and clean out checklist um, that kind of walks you through room by room what to do. So like for your kitchen, get rid of old expired food. We all have a can of green beans, mashed potatoes, canned whatever that's been in our pantry since the day we moved in and we've never opened it. And three years later, it's probably time to go ahead and toss it. Um, you know, wiping down your uh, dining room um, tables, chairs, bar stools, just make sure they're free and clear of any dirt um, and dust, um, things like that. Cleaning out your junk drawer that most of us really have. Um, the next thing you get, so if you know me again, I love to prepack. I prepack everything I can possibly prepack. So what I mean by prepack is like I'm taking trash bags over my um, hanging clothes to use as garment bags to keep them protected. I'm uh, using the Ziploc flex totes um, to put all of my folded clothes in. So that way, you know, they're easily protected and not just tossed into a box I have to refold later. So this section um, kind of talks all of the prepacking tips that I do. And then you get QR codes to all of the products that I discuss. So you can easily scan the QR code, pull it up on Amazon and add it to your uh, um, cart and uh, order it and prepack as well. Boom! Yeah, so it's all simple and easy for you. Um, then you get a high value checklist, uh, inventory sheet really. Um, and this is just a place where you can go and easily list the item, the value, the serial number, and then the inventory number for the box that it's put in, just so you have your own little uh, personal list that's maybe more in detail of what it is that you may um, need. And then you also get a sheet of QR codes that take you to various resources. So some of these resources, um, like the PCS grades, the area guides, um, somewhere, uh, you can easily scan that and go find the area guide to the place that you're going to. Um, you need to know something from uh, the JTR about your entitlements. You've got a QR code to the JTR chapter five, takes you right to where you need. JTR, for those who are newbie PCSers, joint travel regulations. Yes. And then if you need the DTR, if you need to look up the tender of service, you've got a QR code for that as well. So you don't have to go searching the internet to try to find what the newest one is. It's already right there for you. Um, we got just a few more things that I have in this binder. The next one is the grocery and home replacement list. So think about it when you're at your new home and you're going grocery shopping for the first time and you're trying to figure out you know, good golly, what was in my fridge that I need to repurchase now. This kind of lays it all out for you. So your ketchup, your mustard, your mayonnaise, your salad dressing, barbecue sauce, your jelly, your peanut butter, your uh, butter, your cereal, pasta, canned soups, um, just all those little pantry staple items that we may have to repurchase depending on where we moved to or from. Um, it's just kind of a little checklist for you to make sure you've kind of got all that uh, there and you're not thinking like, 
oh gosh, I spent $300 worth of food and I still forgot the ketchup and mustard and, you know, mayonnaise and the sliced cheese and whatever else kind of deal. Um, the last thing here is easy to make meals. I give you four recipes to uh, my some of my family favorites. Um, they're all easy to make meals. So if you are on your way out um, or you just arrived and you need a quick and easy meal to make because you're tired, you're done, whatever it may be, there are four easy meals in here for you um, to easily fix up and cook. So then the last thing, you get a little um, folder. It's got, oh, can I do it? Um, a little pocket, three ring binder pocket deal here. So you can easily put stuff in it and then file it away later. And then you've got your binder tabs all nice and color. Ooh, my camera's off. I should be doing this this way, y'all. Um, <laughs> technology, again, technology fails us. Uh, I'm obviously not cut out, you know, to take Vanna White's job anytime soon. Um, but your binder tabs, again, you get your table contents here and everything, your nice color coded and number tabs that correlate to what your contents is. And that no. is, yes, binder. And that is awesome. I'm just, I mean, like, again, not the go-to organizer here, people. Thanks. That's why we have experts. That's why we have people in the audience. That's why you have fellow male spouses that are like, been there, done that do this, mm -hmm. not that. Um, what I really love about that, my personal favorite, I have two favorite parts. Number one, the QR codes. Because yes. technology might fail, but it does have its place. So to have all those QR codes, you know, for instance, you said, you know, the area guides that are on pcsgrades.com, mm -hmm. if you want to check out your area, clicking that and boom, like, that makes it easier. And the second thing that I really love about it is the, um, hey, you're going to have to pick up these condiments and these things that you're going to forget about. You don't want to drive across the country with a bottle of ketchup in the back. Because I'm going to tell you from my, again, I get a little scatterbrained when I get stressed out. And when that happens, I leave things in my car. And when I leave things in my car, like I'm pretty sure I have petrified French fries from them. My kids were like seven. So no, not really. But I mean, it's entirely possible. Um, and so because we're so scatterbrained, having that all in one spot and, and instead of bringing all of that, you know, maybe the perishable stuff with you, um, like that list is great. But you should also remember to budget for that too. Um, Okay, so let's kind of switch gears a teeny tiny bit and let's talk about organizing our home because if I were to have to PCS right now, we would be so screwed. Um, <laughs> just saying, gonna be honest, I'm talking to my peeps here so I don't feel judged yet. Um, how do you how do you how do you organize your home like what is like the first step to being ready and I say first step because it's like writing a paper. The first paragraph is the hardest one to write. You don't know where to start. So where do you start when you're organizing? So for me, the first step to organizing our homes is the PCS purge. Uh, it's cleaning things out and getting rid of what you no longer need. There is no point to try to organize something and prepack something if you do not need it. Um, you know, and so the big thing is, is going room by room. It doesn't all have to be done in one day. You know, set, you know, some time where you think, you know, I can do a room a week, depending on what your timeline may be, um, you know, and focus on that room. My general rule of thumb, you know, for clothes, if you didn't wear it, this PCS, um, get rid of it uh, for everything else. I mean, if you didn't use it at your current location and you know you're not needing it at your next location and it's not sentimental, it's time for it to go. If it's you know, no longer serves a purpose for anything and it's not sentimental, time to let it go. Um, you know, toys for our kids, if they no longer play with it, if you haven't seen them play with it within the last six, seven months, it's time to let it go. Um, you know, if my kids are always home all the time, you know, if we get rid of the toys that we no longer play with, the toys that we no longer care about, you know, that gives us room where we could get other stuff, um, things that you are more interested in. Um, you know, and so it's a big thing to really, you know, go through your home room by room and first clear out those things. Um, that will help make the rest of your organizing process easier uh, because then you're not organizing things that you don't need. You're getting rid of stuff that's not going to count towards your weight allowance, um, you know, so hopefully it'll help you be underweight then. Um, you know, so that during that purge, Real, is really, really important to do. Um, the second thing with organizing my home, um, you know, 
kind of try to put some like things together. So for me, when we get ready to move, all of my high value things will be gathered in one location, usually the dining room um, around my hutch because I've got fine china and crystal and Polish pottery and um, lots of other breakable things. Um, you know, so all of our high value items kind of get put there so that way when it's time to get packed, they're all together, they can all be packed together. Instead of having like 700 different high value boxes that need to be labeled and unpacked, they're all kind of packed together. So it kind of makes it easier on the delivery end as well. Um, you know, and then just, you know, just kind of organizing those different things. And the big thing really is the clean out. No, and, and definitely. Um, and I'm loving the purge thing. So here's like one of the bonuses. And I know that Krista mm -hmm. at some point, uh, Krista Curtis mentioned that it's a good idea, if you can, to every three months kind of purge your crap. Um, because in, in some instances, you know, we don't know what the military is going to do. A lot of times we wait until we get PCS orders. It's actually kind of fun in my mind. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I actually lived at a duty station for eight years. Write it down, eight years. Uh, mm -hmm. I was in Beaufort, South Carolina. And so come that eight, end of your eight years and we're PCSing here to Quantico, I was like, oh, dear God, that's a lot of purging that I'm going to have to do. But on the flip side of that, you know, I um, I have I have a kid who is just like attached to items that she hasn't seen in four years, which is insane. So that's a process in and of itself. But what I will say is this, when it comes to the purge, I read something of recently, somebody commented and it's, it, I told my husband this, he's like, that's genius. Uh, okay. If it takes 20 minutes to replace, like if you can replace it in 20 minutes and it costs less than $20, toss it and i'm gonna go further i'm gonna say if it takes let you know less than 20 minutes to replace it and less than ten dollars because i'm i'm cheap sorry um <laughs> you know what i mean i'm just saying um then then do it you know and i guess it depends but when it comes to purging i would i would assume and and you can elaborate this would probably be a good time to make or update your own inventory correct yes yes so you will hear we always preach a lot about having your own inventory of your household goods. Um, it's always important to know what you have. Um, and I think in the event that you have a catastrophic claim, they're gonna ask you to itemize that missing box or itemize your household goods as much as possible. So having your own inventory of what you have room by room is huge. Um, it does take a lot of time up front to invest into creating it. But once it's created, um, you know, updating it is really quick and simple. So as you are going through and you are purging things that you no longer need, it's a great time to update that inventory. So you go through your dining room and you realize, you know, I don't need, um, I no longer need five cake stands for whatever reason. I no longer need, you know, 17 chargers, uh, you know, because my dining room table only seats six and I really don't need to have 12 different colors of them. Um, so it's a great time to go into your inventory, pull up your dining room tab, and to um, go in there and just, you know, update that and, and change it, um, you know, update, uh, as, as Monica just commented, you know, pictures too. Pictures are huge. It's a good time to update those pictures. You get rid of some of your, your chargers, you know, you get rid of the red ones and gold ones and you keep just the silver because you feel like it's more versatile for different seasons. Take pictures of just the silver ones to show their updated condition as well. So once you do create that inventory that does take a lot of time. When you do these, these PCS purges, each time you get ready to go move, take a moment and update that inventory as well. No, and I'm, I'm really glad that you put that out there. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not, again, gonna lie. Um, you know, it's not like riding a bike. After eight years and having to PCS, it was almost like I was doing it again because so much had changed with the program, right? Mm -hmm. But also like, again, fly by the seat of my pants. And it was just when I started becoming, you know, like more knowledgeable about the PCS process, I didn't do an inventory. Yeah. So when some of my stuff was missing, I, sorry, man, I can't prove it. I can't prove it. And I'm still looking for one particular thing. Yeah, let's just not go there. But then again, just for the record, and I want everybody to know this, that Megan has smacked my hand on that when it comes to your inventory, you absolutely have to open every single box or thing when you get it okay because if you don't either a it could be damaged and you can't do anything about it four years later hi um or b you know you're not going to be able to tell if everything's missing i have i will say i personally have a box and that thing that i was looking for is probably in it 
that has literally not been open since two, not one, but two duty stations ago. That's on me. Megan's already gave me the what for about it, but do open every box. Um, and so, yeah, so good on you, Megan. Um, we have a lot of questions and we're going to get to them. And while we're getting to these questions, if you have any questions for Megan or anything at all, any come, whatever, st start thinking of them, start writing them down because we're going down the question rabbit hole. Yeah. Okay. So the first one that I have, I'm going way back up here, is uh, from <laughs> Kelly. So Kelly said, we've got orders to Germany, but got word yesterday that we're getting diverted to Newport, but they want to set up all overseas stuff. Okay, so are we going to have to wait for our diverted orders before we get anything set up? Unfortunately, yes. You're going to have to wait for those amended orders um, to be able to get properly set up in DPS because your current orders, that orders number is going to take you to Germany. So if you try to set up orders with that without them being amended, um, they're going to send your stuff to Germany. Um, so you're, it, it's going to suck, but you're going to have to wait, Kelly, for those amended orders. Okay, and is there anything that Kelly can do in the meantime? Like, what should she be thinking about or focused on in this meantime? Um, take this time, I mean, do the purge. Go through, start purging, start organizing. Um, you know, it, it, you're in one of those situations where either we know we're going and we can't do anything about it yet. Um, you know, maybe you've set up your move on DPS and there's nothing more that you can do on that side of it, or you're waiting for your amended orders. That's the perfect time to go through check your inventories, purge, clean out, start organizing things, uh, you know, depending on when your timeline is of when you're moving, go through the various checklists, you know, and start saying, you know, do I have kids? Do I need to start requesting school records? Is there any paperwork I need to fill out for that? Um, do Are there any civilian providers that we saw that I need to start requesting medical records from them as well? What paperwork do I need to fill out for that? Um, you know, and start trying to do those additional things to, you know, so that way when it comes time, you've got everything together and ready to go. Awesome. Um, and great question, Kelly, and we hope that that helps. Again, if you need additional help, feel free to message the uh, PCS Grades Facebook page and we'll, we'll get you in touch with Megan because she's cool like that. Um, the next question that we have is from Mary. Shout out, Mary. Um, I, did a, I did DPS and it said waiting for company to be assigned. I called and they said call back next week. I've heard this for two weeks now. Then I started hearing something about we don't get a date until May for our June move. Does this sound right? So partially, yes. So if you are moving this summer and you've already got your move set up in DPS, do not expect to have a company assigned until um, probably late March, early April at the earliest. So again, the tender of service, the business rule changes take effect in May 15th of every year. So January and February, those companies are going through their rate filing process with the DOD, with the government. And so right now, you know, they, I think, have uh, submitted their first round of rates. The DOD government has either approved their rates or denied them. And then they're going back and resubmitting their second round um, of rate filing to see where they will fall into with the uh, DOD program. Uh, so summer moves will not get companies assigned to them until those rate filings have been approved um, because that is peak season. They will go under a different rate uh, for that company than they would go under right now. So if you've got a summer PCS and you've already set up in DPS, don't panic yet. You shouldn't get, um, like I said, late March, early April at the earliest is when you would get assigned a uh, company. Okay, and, and so what I would like to do is because if she if she um, won't get a date until May, she's moving in June, so she's going to fall under those May fifteenth those those new changes. Yeah. I want you to give Mary a little bit of help, and I want you to tell her maybe a couple one or two of the changes that are actually going to make her move a little bit better than what it would have been. Um, so one of the changes is is that if you are going to be having any of your shipments serviced on a Saturday. Um, their, your move coordinator, your TSP is going to be working on Saturday. They will be open um, until 5 p.m. on Saturday to be able to provide you assistance. Now, currently, if anything happens on Saturday, there's nobody for us to get a hold of. But starting May 15th, you will be able to get a hold of somebody at your TSP's company to be able to assist you through any issues that you may be experiencing. Um, another one is, um, uh, I don't know if what the proper terminology is. It's uh, 
home protections so think they're going to put like high traffic areas of your home hallways entryways they're going to put floor runners down to protect your flooring uh, entry doors where you're going to have furniture going in and out of they are going to wrap them with moving blankets that way if they bump it with a dresser going out the door it's not going to leave a scratch on your door um, so they're going to be doing those home protections to kind of protect your home and kind of help prevent having to file a claim on uh you know a damaged wall as you're trying to move out of the home um so you got that and then if you are having a crated move of any sort uh seals are coming back into play so right now if you have a crated move some companies are still using seals on your crates but they are currently not required um, but may 15th those uh seals on your crates do come back as being required okay and that makes sense so hang in there we've got your back um and and i just <laughs> I, I'm really glad that they're doing the wrapping thing of the door because my door got taken off my last PCS. And me and my husband were very comical in trying to put that thing back on. So it's very nice to know that they're they're thinking about those sort of dynamics, if you will. And I'm kind of wishing they would have done, <laughs> moved here. Um, um, oh, yes, Susan. Shout out, Susan. Thank you for joining us. Yes, yes, I try to be funny. Um, I can't hide my face. I love when Megan tells me things like I didn't know or that are new or that just surprise me because I'm always like, huh? yeah, it's like, yeah. So we need some entertainment up in here. Um, so anyways, uh, more questions. Let's go with, I mean, we have, wow. I mean, we have a, first of all, we have a lot of compliments on this PCS binder because you know what I mean? Like, I need a binder. I need a binder. Where can I get it? And I just love that. And so, um, uh, Stacy, Stacy Benson, who is our community outreach manager here at PCSGrades.com, PCSGrades.com. Yes, go to that website. But at PCSGrades, she's going to throw up that link to to uh, what Megan created and why I'm looking for the next uh, question. Megan, can you kind of tell them about what the, that that um, the the binder that you offer that you've made for to make our lives easier? Yeah, so I mean, the binder, like I said, it's kind of built out of, it came about out of necessity of trying to stay organized. Um, you know, I know it's not necessarily, you know, the, it may not be the best for everybody, but it's the thing that I have found has been most beneficial for me and my family and the things that we need to have in it. So there in the comments, you have the link to the shop where you can get them. Um, so there's two things that you're going to find listed there. There is the downloadable binder. I will say I've had a few folks that have had issues with it downloading. If you do have issues, just message us and we'll uh, work with getting it fixed. I think the bugs are fixed on it. Um, and then there is also the binder kit. Now I will say that binder kit that is listed there is going to come with everything that you saw today except um, the three ring binder. Um, but, but, so all the all the stuff that goes in yeah. said three ring binder because you wanted to leave the option open for people like myself who need a trapper keeper. Like some people prefer to have a zip binder. Some people use to, uh, prefer to have an accordion file thing. And so I didn't want to provide you with a three ring binder if you were just going to toss it because you have something else that you prefer to use. So I provide you with everything that goes inside of it um, that you need. And then you go and get whichever product type of deal that you uh that works best for your situation. Um, but you get everything else, the guide, the notebook, um, the table of uh, contents, the tabs, um, tab dividers, um, you get all of that other stuff in it. And also with you picking out your own three ring binder. I mean, if you don't have kids, you may only need a half inch binder. If you have a lot of kids, you may need a two inch binder. Um, so again, not giving you another product that you may not um, need and might just end up in your donation pile. And because of that, it'll also keep shipping costs down um, and everything because nobody likes paying you know, crazy shipping rates. Um, so without sending you the three ring binder, it ships much quicker, easier, faster, and cheaper. Word. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to throw this comment up from Jasmine. Shout out, Jasmine. Um, first time PCSing. This looks so helpful. Thanks for taking the time to explain all this awesome information. Okay. So, I mean, this, what I love about this comment, Jasmine, again, shout out, um, is this is exactly why Megan and I are partnering to do what we're doing. You know what I mean? And then, it, but it's not just, look, I said it myself. 
seasoned spouse here. I prefer Cabernet spouse. I'm not a French fry, but you know, I've been around the block a little while. I, I still need this. This still benefits me. And it doesn't matter where you're at in your military mm -hmm. life journey. This is going to be helpful. So shout out and thanks for recognizing that because we do this for you. Um, and then we did have a question, um, a couple about, let's see, uh, 128. Um, does the grocery list also include cleaning supplies on there? No. So this one is strict um, food pantry type of items, but not cleaning supplies. But now you're giving me a good idea to go back and uh, update it with some cleaning supplies uh, you, to help again, to help folks remember those things and not, you know, get home. And now you have a, you know, sink full of dirty dishes and no way to clean them. Exactly. And you know, when it came to like, I loved it being in Buford eight years and it, it hurt me, but I got to see so many people, so many people, so many of my friends moved away. Mm -hmm. um, but I got all their stuff. I got their cleaning supplies because I most of the time helped them move out. I got their uh, leftovers or we had epic meal time, you know, trying to use it all up. I got their booze up until the Marine Corps decided to, well, the marine families to ship booze but that was a total plus sometimes we just sit on the porch and anyways um so so yeah cleaning supplies on your list shout out joyce thank you for improving the process mm -hmm. you rock um monica had a question she she asked can i add a list of activities for my kids in a binder yeah like, you can tell like like yeah so this binder i mean if you have other things that you want to add to it um i mean feel free to add what you need um to it so if you've got things for your kids that you want to have in there you can definitely um take it and add to it word um let's see who else do we have um Wow, you guys are awesome. Can I just say that out loud? That happened, you're awesome. Because wow, we have a lot of, oh my gosh, you're helping each other out. You're helping us out. You're asking the right questions. I mean, I'm just seeing, I'm just seeing a lot of shout outs too. Mm -hmm. I wanna also comment real quick. Um, you'll also see there thrown into the comments um, from PCS Grades, it's a link to a Google Drive that has some free resources and also a household goods inventory for you to go room by room. Um, so if you go to that link and you go to that Google Drive, um, you'll see in there there's various different types of checklists depending on if you are somebody that needs a checklist, you know, that's, you know, six, eight weeks out, or if you need somebody that has a quick step by step through the entire process, you will find that there. You'll find uh, the household goods inventory that I mentioned that will take you room by room. Um, you'll find that form for the PCS, uh, the, the quick reference contact info sheet there. Um, and then you'll also find some uh, document called the basic binder kits. So that is basically telling you what you need for a binder and then basically telling you like what the table of contents are. Um, so if you don't need all that additional stuff that I provide, uh, you know, that, that gives you the basics to it. Um, but if you wanted, you know, like the full kit of everything, um, you can go to the website that was also dropped there as well. Awesome. And we had a question from Brianna. Shout out, Brianna. Do you recommend that we have hard copies of our children's medical records? Um, so I'm going to say it's probably going to depend on on your children and if they have any special uh, needs, circumstances or medical issues where you may need those hard records um, where they may not transfer. Now, I know a lot of folks, a lot of doctor's offices, if you take a thumb drive to them, you, you know, they can put stuff on a thumb drive and you can carry that around with you. Um, again, uh, technology sometimes fails. Um, we have a Google Drive where we got some of our records up there so we can easily email that link to whoever or add access to whoever to see what needs to be seen. Um, I will tell you, I did a PCS one time, or uh, yeah, a PCS, I was 37 weeks pregnant. Uh, my doctor, <laughs> we've been through it all. Uh, my doctor gave me hard copies of my um, prenatal care records so I could hand carry those with me to my next doctor's appointment 17 hours away in a new state. Um, just concerned over, you know, things not uh, transferring soon enough. So I think it depends on um, you know, what their needs are, um, what needs you have as a family. If they have specialty care that has to routinely 
um, continue without missing a beat, you may want to. So that way you can walk into that first appointment or before that first appointment and drop off the records. Um, you know, so I think, you know, part of it kind of depends on what your family situation may be, but I think it's always a good idea. Have that thumb drive, ask them to drop the records onto the thumb drive um, as well. So that way you've got a backup digital copy and maybe you don't have to carry such a big binder for medical records. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm going to I'm going to give two shout outs here again to Susan and Joyce. Um, so for Susan, I would say yes, since my son's records have been misplaced with every PCS um, again. Same here. What I would say and what I would suggest very again, shout out Susan um, and shout out Joyce current and also include your current IEP or individual education plan with um, with your binder. And the reason I say that to both is because I've lived that. OK, the one area where I am actually organized to the point where Megan is, the only way I can ever live up to that standard is when it came to my kids and their education and their medical issues. So I have an EFMP kid and I and and they needed to have I needed to have that IEP because the first thing I'm going to do is when I walk into that school, I need to explain what accommodations were being received and what accommodations would make him the best student so that we could be one team, one fight. And the same thing goes with the medical side of things. If you yes. don't have, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, so in the binder, um, tab six is school records IEP. I include IEP because I have one child with an IEP and one with a 504 plan. Um, so I know how important it is to have that current IEP with you in hand. Yes, the schools will request it, but if they have it, um, and they can start looking at it. They can start planning off of that. So I do include the IEP in there. And then again, tab four, medical records, shot records, dental records, physicals. Um, you know, medical records depends on on what it is that you may um, need, uh, you know, what kind of care they may have, or if it's something you can put on a thumb drive or request later. Um, shot records, I always keep an updated copy of shot records because um, when you uh, enroll in school, um, they generally ask for a copy of that to make sure they are up to date on things. Uh, dental records, depending on what's going on. So when we go to PCS he, from here, my son is going to be in braces. He gets them on in two months. Um, he's got his expander right now. We're not gonna finish our braces procedure while we are here. We're gonna have to PCS with that. Um, so we will be carrying his dental records with us because we'll have to um, get right on in to continue that care. Um, and then physicals, if your kids play sports, if they wanna be involved in anything, some schools do require physicals anyway. Um, so having that stuff um, with you before you leave your current PCM, um, you know, have them fill out a current updated physical. So that way, you know, if it takes you a while to get in with your new provider at your new location, you've already got that with you. Exactly. And same thing for the school side of things. Like, thank gosh, I had every record from the IEP for the last three years so that I could hand that to them. Because, I mean, if I were to call the school right now and ask if they had yet received the records from the previous school, mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure the answer would be no. So me providing those records allowed them to hit the ground running and start those accommodations ahead of time. By the way, when I say I'm still not certain whether or not the old school transferred to the new school, my son graduated in 2019. Write it down. Right. Mm -hmm. So just saying, having that handy, you can hit the ground running a little easier. Um, and I'm sure that applies to a lot of different things. Um, so, oh, um, we did have a question about one of the reference guides. So from Mary, is just the one transportation quick reference available? That is on the Google Drive um, and the free resource um, uh, Google Drive folder that you'll see. Um, it's listed on there as PCS contact info. Um, and it is that quick reference uh, contact guide where you can put in your, your group coordinator information, your local agent, destination agent, and all that good stuff. Word. Um, wow. I mean, we just have, wow, just a ton of, this is amazing. Can I just say this is amazing that you people actually care about this? Because not that it's not amazing. That part's not amazing. What's amazing What's amazing is that you guys are having questions, comments, and concerns, and oh, by the way, adding ideas to make it even better. That's amazing. I love our community. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, so 
while Stacy, again, our awesome community outreach manager at PCS Grades, is getting those names together for the Wheel of Names, we're going to find out who's going to win this awesome PCS binder, courtesy of Megan Harless, our resident the BA. Um, so let me just go ahead and say, oh my gosh, so I, 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 don't, I don't know if I really want to pimp this yet, but... <laughs> I'm going to. No, I'm going to. I'm going to just put it out there. Our 50th episode is coming up pretty soon, and it's gonna. We're gonna hit the one year mark next month. You really, really, really want to make sure that you are on this webinar on March 31st because it's gonna be epic with epic prizes. 50, 50 episodes plus the one year mark. It all coincides at once. Are you kidding me? I can't wait. I want to be, I want to be like, oh, right. you get a prize and you get a prize. Everybody gets a prize. Yeah. It, yeah. Do you want to tell them what the episode is already since we know and what we're giving away or make them wait in suspense? Oh, huh. maybe we can provide a teaser. So why don't you go ahead and tease that? Ooh. So the first thing, um, there's, I think, how many? Four, three or four prizes we're giving away. One of them will be another binder, another complete binder kit. And then another prize. Um, so that uh, week or that episode, we are going to be discussing um, all the pre-packing um, uh, things that I do, um, best ways to pre-pack the products and everything. All of those products that we're going to discuss in that episode, you will get one of. Um, whoever is going to be one of our giveaway prizes. So somebody will get a box with uh, a box of Ziploc Flex Totes, a box of the Jumbo Ziploc bags, a box of the room labels that we'll discuss at the time. Uh, everything that I use to prepack and to make our move smooth is all going to go. One of those products is all going to go in a box, and somebody will get a box of prepack. Um, PCS organization um, products. Awesome, and 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 let me just say that that is not all. But yeah, that's not all. Not. Wait, there's more. Like oh. God, I've always wanted to say that. I've always wanted to say that. Like I seriously, I felt like I was made to write jingles and say, but wait, there's more. We are God had other plans. Commercial, commercial, right now. But wait, there's more. Okay, so now we're fixing to do this wheel of names and we have, holy crap, what do y'all see this wheel? Okay, write it down. All right, here we go. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Tell me, Megan, tell me when you see my screen. I don't see it. Stand by. I see you it. see it? Look at that. Look at, look at that. Look how huge that is. That's, look how huge that is. Um, so here we go. This is for the PCS binder. Okay, by the way, I'm just going to throw up a picture. This, all of this, all of the things that Megan went through today with the little pocket thingy and the little checklist and all the phone numbers and all her branded material. Like, mm -hmm. let's do this. So I'm super excited. Uh, here we go. We're going to spin. Spin that wheel. Drum roll, please. Oh, my goodness. Susan Reynolds. Okay. Just a quick, just a quick howdy do. Susan, I know you're on here and I know you're watching. And I know that you don't plan on PCSing anytime soon. So... I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to send you some Hope Design Limited bling and I'll get you, I'll get with you offline to, so that you can, so that we can pick out a piece for you. Um, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit this again. We're going to hit this again and we're going to put this out to, you don't plan on moving ever again. You hear that? Do you hear that folks? She doesn't plan on moving ever again, which is great because she doesn't live too far from me. So once this COVID mess is over, I'm going to, yes, it's going to be epic. Um, so I'm, 
finally made it to the point that we all aspire to. Her her husband uh, recently retired and they have entered retirement life. And so at some point we all aspire um, to enter retirement the life as well. Yes, and 22 times, this is your due, sister. So I'll get with you on the back end about some some bling for you because um, you sparkle every day. So we're going to hit that wheel of names. Here we go. Oh, my gosh. Are you freaking kidding me? No. Nope. Kelly! Yes. Kelly, yay! Congrats. Oh, my gosh. Because she's fixing to do this. Oh, see, you're just all riled up, aren't you, girlfriend? Like, seriously, this is, this is, okay, this, that's awesome. Can I just say that out loud? That's awesome. Stop sharing, MJ. Um, okay, stop sharing. So that's awesome because Kelly is she in? Where's she at? Where's she at? Where's she at? Kelly, I'm look did you leave us, Kelly? Don't leave us. Don't leave us, but I will reach out to you in the event that I cannot. Um, Kelly. Kelly, if you're watching this, go ahead and uh, message the Facebook page at PCS Grades. And if not, we will get with you. But let me tell you, you need this. And I think that you really wanted it. That's really actually you really needed it. I think that's awesome. And you all need it. So there were a lot of you that asked, actually, hey, can I, you know, can I um, can I purchase this? Yes, we dropped the link in the comment section, um, and our lovely Lizanne Lightfoot, who is the content editor here at PCS Grades, is going to actually be writing down um, everything we talked about today. Plus, we'll have the video in there, and we'll also have Megan's link so that you can go to that as well. Um, so, anyways, yes, congratulations, Susan. We'll get with you about that bling. Congratulations, Kelly. This is going to make your PCS so much easier um okay so that's all that we have today and i'm really really excited thank you megan as always for being our pcs reform advocate for for working for us and helping us to have a better move than we would have otherwise mm -hmm. and um to our audience of course forever and always megan this too shall pcs bye everybody